Hey everyone, Spencer here in front of the Supreme Court where history was made just a few weeks ago, twice over. The Affordable Care Act was upheld and same-sex marriages were decided as legal and legitimate in all 50 states. Truly historic stuff. However, just days later, a much quieter ruling was made by the Supreme Court regarding air pollution. In a 5-4 to four decision, the court ruled that the Environmental Protection Agency's 2012 regulation of mercury under the Clean Air Act did not consider costs of implementation to power plants early enough in their rulemaking process. Anticlimactic, I know. It does not have the same huzzah factor as universal health care or universal marriage privileges. However, it points to a larger conversation about economics, principally environmental economics, and what we as a society value. So let's take a step back. The Clean Air Act was passed into law in 1963 and gave the federal government power to regulate air pollution. It has been amended many times over the years to include surface level ozone, motor vehicle pollution, and compounds that contribute to acid rain. The Clean Air Act is also what the Obama administration is wielding to set carbon emission regulations from coal and gas-fired power plants under the Clean Power Plan, but that's a topic for another video. So in 2012, another regulation was established that set a ceiling for how much mercury can be emitted from electricity producing power plants. So we are already bumping up against some important economic particulars here. You see, air pollution is in economic terms a market failure. Markets are used to adequately price and make available scarce resources. In this case, people who want to purchase electricity in the United States are able to do so. However, that market, in its quest to maximize profits, creates air pollution. So this is where government steps in, and why the Clean Air Act was created 50 years ago. Because markets are imperfect, and we rely on the public sector to intervene and adequately value the costs and benefits of regulation that protect the well-being of we the people. So the electricity industry did not like this regulation, for the costs of giving society clean air to breathe befell them. So some industry groups and the state of Michigan sued the EPA. This was taken to the D.C. District Court that ruled two to one that the EPA did the right thing. But now, just a few weeks ago, the Supreme Court ruled that the EPA did not do the right thing. So now you ask, what does this all mean? Well, empirically, we are actually getting cleaner air because the U.S. coal plants have already installed equipment to remove mercury under the regulation. And this equipment provides co-benefits of removing other pollutants hazardous to human health. So even though the highest court in the land has sided with industry here, over half of the U.S. coal power plants have already installed this pollution abatement equipment. Of course, they could just decide not to use it and stick it to the EPA. Furthermore, this decision does not overturn the actual mercury rule. It simply accuses the EPA of not considering costs when deciding if their mercury rule was appropriate and necessary. So we arrive again at an important waypoint in this conversation. Costs. See, costs and value are amorphous, fundamentally intangible, and really subjective. We manifest costs and value in our economic system through money. More money means more cost and more value. The underlying idea of this decision is what is the value of cleaner air and at what cost are we willing to mandate it? It was estimated that the cost of installing mercury scrubbers would be nearly $10 billion a year for electric utilities. So that's a lot of money. But it's also estimated that the benefits to society in the form of lower air quality mediated ailments, medical treatment for the high mercury levels and so on, would total some $25 billion to $100 billion a year. See, that's even more dough. These are what are called trade-offs. Are electric utilities willing to trade $10 billion per year for the distributed benefit of $100 billion a year to the rest of society? Well, according to the Supreme Court, these costs need to be considered earlier in the conversation. But still, this is a conversation fundamentally about costs and value. Are you confused? Don't be. Basically, the story here is the EPA made a rule. Industry said, that will be expensive. We're going to sue you. And the Supreme Court said, it isn't our job to decide if the rule was too expensive or not. But y'all didn't have the conversation about costs early enough in the conversation. As banal as it may be, 
this is an interesting case study for environmental economics. And environmental economics asks, at what point is a cleaner environment too expensive? So this brings us to another economic concept of marginal costs and marginal returns. For example, starting at a baseline of absolutely no mercury control, each added dollar of mercury control adds a substantial amount of benefit. And as you add another dollar, that benefit shrinks and shrinks and shrinks. Per dollar, shrinks a little bit more. Another dollar shrinks a little bit more. Another dollar shrinks a little bit more. These benefits to society that I'm talking about manifest in the form of cleaner air, cleaner water, etc. So with each dollar added, those returns actually shrink. So it's a sort of like pizza. That's right, pizza. The banquet is in the first bite. It's the most delicious bite. Less so the second, less so the third, even less the fourth. And before you know it, you're on your fifth slice of pizza and it's adding absolutely no value. And you're thinking to yourself, why did we come to Papa John's? And it's very similar with pollution control. At a certain point, it becomes increasingly expensive to see the same returns in cleaning up environmental quality. So this explanation of the Supreme Court's ruling on mercury, through it, we explored some important topics in economics, but more specifically, environmental economics. First, we talked about market failures. The air pollution created during traditional electricity generation is a market failure, principally something known as an externality. That is, the price of air pollution in the form of damage to human health and well-being Damage to buildings and infrastructure and damage to ecosystems is not factored into the price of the goods and services creating that pollution. That is, the cost of the accruing damage is external to the selling price. The question then becomes, how can we internalize these costs so that markets can function in alignment with optimal social conditions? Optimal social conditions, in this case, being cleaner air. We also address the ideas of costs and value. See, the conversation here is fundamentally about trade-offs and choices. Should we make the choice to trade more monetary value for better environmental well-being? At what point are these trade-offs not worth the return on investment? Who should bear the costs of this pollution abatement? So to wrap this up, environmental economics is a study of how economic choices affect the other-than-human environment like air quality, water quality, climate, and so on. It helps structure intelligent and ever more prudent questions regarding how we should make these choices and how we should go about deciding who should do what and at what point the cost will exceed the benefits. Also important to keep in mind is environmental economics and economics more broadly is more about the art of human decision making than it is a hard science. There are not definitive answers to these difficult questions about pollution, costs, and market failures. Indeed, that is the reason we are faced with these challenges of pollution in the first place, and institutions such as the EPA are so contentious. So the Supreme Court said, EPA, you need to do a better job considering the costs of your environmental mandates, which is really what governments, agencies, companies, and we as individuals should be doing more regularly as we continue to be more and more an environmentally influential species on this planet. Air pollution and mercury pollution is a specific kind of market failure called an externality, meaning that the costs of the consequences do not arrive at the point of sale, but show up for third parties who do not have a say in the matter. Secondly, we must understand that there are trade-offs, that we cannot fix all of environmental issues and that we need to prioritize, and that at a certain point of putting money into pollution abatement, we will actually find diminishing marginal returns. And third, we don't get neat little answers in economics like we do in math or science. And that is because economics is the study of human decision-making when there are conflicting and competing values. And values differ for everyone. Hey, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. And by all means, please leave a comment. Let me know what you thought, what you liked, what you disagree with, and ideas for future videos. Until next time, namaste, pura vida, c'est la vie, and enjoy. Why did we go to Papa John?